Our Computex 2024 coverage is made possible by Azus, G-Skill, Fantex, Team Group, Lian Lee, Azrock, Corsair, XPG, Thermaltake, Clev, Montec, and Seasonic. Welcome back guys, I'm Stuart from GGF. It is Computex Day 2, and as you can see, we have a huge display of boards from ASRock here. And we'll be covering all these new Intel boards, probably not all, all of them, because I'll be here for quite a long time. Now, I want to get things out of the way. I cannot say what platform these are for. Even ASRock can't say. All it says is they're the next gen desktop motherboard. But for you guys, you probably already know what they are going to be. Now, I want to cover some of these high-end ones, some more mid-range ones, and then a workstation board down the end. Now, this one here is the Tai Chi Aqua. So, ASRock have done a bit of a renaming scheme. A lot of their boards now starting with Tai Chi. Previously, Tai Chi was its own model within itself. Now we have the Tai Chi Aqua, the Tai Chi OCF, Tai Chi OCF, which is a Cam 2. If you are uh, following my previous videos, I covered the Cam 2 module from G-Skill. So it seems that a lot of boards are doing that. And then we also have the normal Tai Chi, and then we have the Nova Wi-Fi. So it looks like the Nova Wi-Fi and the ones below that are ditching the Tai Chi naming scheme. But starting with this Aqua, and this thing looks absolutely gorgeous. We have the white PCB. I wouldn't say it's 100% white. It's sort of a grayish color. And then we have this interesting uh, VRM water block, which is done by AlphaCool. Now, I think that's the first time ASRock has collaborated with AlphaCool, so it's good to see that. Now, you might be wondering, hey, previous uh, Aqua boards had the full mono block. Now, I think this is a good choice. I'm not going with the mono block. The board's going to be cheaper. They said it will be cheaper than last time. There's no CPU block. You can choose your own block, but I think this is going to be best suited with what AlphaCool already has, because I think that silver is going to match one of their current core blocks on their own. Now, I don't want to spend too long on all of these because this video will go forever. Uh, some new features, ASRock has their EZ release. Basically, uh, I think they're one of the last ones to do this. This will just allow you to uh, unplug your GPU straight out without having to try and reach in and undo the plug. Another feature they have, not on this one, but on this one down here, which are on a lot of boards, is their new M.2 release covers, and it just pops off straight like that. I'll actually just leave that off, so that'll just come off, and then there's one clip that clips it back on. For some reason, on the Aqua, they've decided to go with all the screws. I'm not sure why, but they've just gone with that on that one. Now, another feature I want to talk about is on the I.O. This is interesting. Now, I'm not sure what the feedback is going to be on this. I like it. There are absolutely no USB Type A on the rear I.O. on this board. There is, I believe, a total of 10 USB Type C. So there's a bunch of eight at the start. So four of them are five gigabit, four of them are 10 gigabit, and then there's two on their own down the bottom, and they are Thunderbolt uh, Thunderbolt 4, so that's a whopping 10. Now, I think that's going to be good if the implementation is done right. So I think if ASRock can give you a dongle or a splitter that can split one or two of them to say four or three Type A, because you don't want to have a single uh, USB-C to Type A, because if you've got four USB Type A devices, you're going to be using up four of those spots straight away. And the odds that your USB Type A devices, like keyboards, mice, uh, wireless devices that use a dongle, you don't need a full single 10 gigabit. So if you can split that into a four or a three, you can get rid of all your USB Type A devices in one or two ports, and then you have all the rest for your high-speed uh, USB-C storage or other devices you need. So another thing I want to talk about is the whopping power phase. We're at 33 power stage. I've never seen any board uh, that high. Obviously, workstation boards would probably be more, but this is more on the consumer side. And 110 amp SPS. Now, this thing is just insane. Moving down a little bit on the Tai Chi OCF. So this is the OC formula. These have been out for a little while now this series i think i wouldn't say a little while it's been out for actually a long time and they did skip a few generations but now it is actually back and one thing they always go with this uh, ocf or the oc former is they have that yellow branding i have taken it off but you can see it down the bottom so the only difference between these two boards is that this is the normal uh dim ddr5 version with your two dims normally these oc boards only have two dims better overclocking but the one down the bottom has the cam 2 module which is down here and we spoke about that at the G skill booth. So obviously the other difference is all the um, overclocking controls have been moved from the side on this one onto the top because obviously that uh, Cam 2 module has gotten in the way. So that's the only differences there. One thing I suggested to the guys for this one is why didn't they wrap this heatsink around? They could have gone nuts with a funky design, get some extra cooling on there. Rather than relying on the 
Kingston Fury heatsink that would come with this if they do have one. Say it's a different color silver or it's a different type of black or a different type of material. It's just going to stick out there and not match with the rest of the board. So it'd be interesting to see if they can actually blend that around to match that board. Uh, other features on this one, 27 power phase. I asked them why does this one, the overclocking board, have less than the, the uh, aqua. That's basically because these are the water-cooled VRM, so they could go a little bit higher because you are pumping that coolant through the VRMs, whereas this one is just relying on air cooling from your system. Apart from that, these have five gigabit uh, ethernet, both of these, and then we have 10 and also 2.5 on, actually no, it's 10 and five on the Aqua, which is pretty good to see. And then this actually has six M.2s. It's got two actually Gen 5, and then four of them are Gen 4. And then on the OC formula, we have one Gen 5, and then five on the uh, on these two, which are the Gen 4. So it looks like the Aqua is out on its own. It has the most uh, M.2s, it's got the dual, Ethernet with the 10 and the 5, the higher VRM capacity for those. Moving down to some slightly cheaper boards from ASRock. So we have the original Tai Chi, just the uh, plain Tai Chi branding. And then we have the Phantom Gaming Nova Wi-Fi. So these aren't as high end as the three I just covered before. Now, the aesthetic on these are slightly different, but most of the main features are exactly the same. So I was told that the Wi-Fi is different. On this one, it's Intel uh, Wi-Fi 7. And on the Nova, it is the Intel killer Wi-Fi 7. So basically, no real difference there except for that little bit on the Wi-Fi. They both come with 6 M.2. So one is going to be the Gen 5 and then 5. It actually has 5. Let me take this off so we can... I'll take this one off so we can actually see all of these 5 on here. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then you have your Gen 5 which is the 6th one there. So that is a heap of uh, SSDs on there. The power phase of this is 25, which is 25 is pretty much more than the power phase I've seen on pretty much most boards on the current uh, Intel boards. So the fact that these are their more mid-range boards, I wouldn't say mid-range, I'll say mid to high end because the boards I just covered are probably more extreme end. But to have 25 power stage on these is pretty good to see. Now, one interesting feature I saw here, we all know that these quad expansion cards exist, but you may notice that this one isn't a 16 by slot. So normally when you have your quad M.2s, you normally split them 4x4x4x4x4 four by four by four by four by, and that's where your 16 comes from. But this one is just a 4x. So all of these run at 1x. So you're actually going to lose a bit of speed. So you're going to uh, run your Gen 4 M.2s at 1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x1x
if you don't want to do that. So I suggested to them maybe something like the Tai Chi or the Nova. They should throw a 10 gigabit Ethernet on there and that could be sort of like a workstation board for those guys that are after that. Uh, but apart from that, I think that's it on this one. Uh, it's got the Gen 5 16 by slot at the start and then it's got that silver aesthetic. Now moving down to a slightly smaller form factor, all those other ones were uh, standard ATX. This is an MATX board. Now once again, this doesn't look like much, but this has a 20 power phase design. Now to get that in an MATX board is insane. I don't think I've ever seen an MATX board with that much of a power phase. And we do have three M.2s, so the first one is going to be Gem 5, and then your two down below here are uh, your Gem 4. And we have the Intel 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and I think that's pretty much it on that one. Nothing uh, to go over that. Moving up here is a board that's, or not the board, but more or less a platform that's already out. Is it W790? It's a workstation. This is an R2, so they already have a board that's already launched, but this one will be coming out soon. It is a completely stripped down board. As you can see, it's looking pretty naked there. There's no I.O. cover. Everything has been toned down a bit, and by doing that, it's going to be much cheaper. They've removed a lot of ports. They've only kept the necessary items you need. It does have a 22 power phase design. It supports uh, quad channel memory up to 6,800. It has the slot configuration here. So these are all Gen 5 except for one of them. I don't know which one of these. I haven't really looked at these boards, but it is all Gen 5 except for one, and they all run at 16 by, so 16 by, 16 by, 16 by, so on. So if you love your storage, you can go with a Gen 4 or Gen 5 Quad M.2 card. You can max all these out for ultimate SSD storage. And for CPU support, you're looking at the Xeon W3400 and the W2400. I actually run a 3400 series Xeon in my personal system. If you're looking at them for Adobe work, they do a really good job. You'll also find this board does have 10 gigabit ethernet that is marble and then interesting it does have a u.2 mini sas so if you want to run those larger capacity u.2 drives that will support it just quickly here i wanted to cover this ai app that asrock have now Computex this year has pretty much been all about ai so i had to cover a little bit of this in this video. So what ASRock are doing differently, a lot of AI programs work over the internet, but this one you install locally. It's a stable diffusion software. There is a video playing in the background. It's not me actually using it. There's been a recording of it being set up. So what you do is you download the app and you can do your queries, everything you need to know, and it will run locally. So when you do all that, it runs locally and it will use the hardware within your system. And this one is using the Intel Arc A770 Phantom Gaming from ASRock, and it is using that GPU power to do the query on this system. That's it on the ASRock booth. I'm really keen to check out some more of those Intel boards. When they do officially launch, especially the Aqua, I have used nearly every Aqua since it's been out, so it'll be keen to see how the new one performs. But anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank ASRock for letting me take a look at this massive booth, and stay tuned for the next one.